Hello everyone, this is Mr. Andrew Koffler, and this is part two of the guided notes called Angles When Parallel Lines Are Cut by a Transversal. And so if you could go ahead and turn to the second page, this is where we need to pick it up for this video. Problems one through eight. Now, I bet some of you might actually feel confident enough to do these eight problems on your own based on what you've already learned from the first page of guided notes and also what you learned from the other guided notes called Angles Vertical complementary and supplementary. So if you feel confident and would like to try one through eight on your own, go ahead and hit pause now and then hit play when you're ready, whenever you're ready to see how you did. If you don't feel quite confident yet and you would like for me to lead you through these problems, that is also fine. All right, let's take a look at these directions. Given H parallel to K, that's right, these two vertical lines is the symbol for parallel and T is the transversal. If you go ahead and look at the drawing, this is exactly what you're gonna see. H and K are definitely the parallel lines and T is that line called the transversal that intersects it. All right, they are also telling us that the measure of angle one, this guy up here, is 110 degrees. So keep that in mind, that's gonna be very useful later on. All right, problem number one. Angle one and angle two are a pair of something angles. All right, let's take a look at this together. Angle one, angle two. They are actually in matching positions. Now, what do I mean by that? Angle one is kind of like this top right angle. Well, if you would take that top part of the picture and move it down here, you see angle two is in that same position, the top right angle for this bottom part of the picture. So what do we call angles that are in matching positions? You can look it up on the first page if you need to. Corresponding angles. Now, if you're sitting there and you're like, under Koffler, why do we care what type of angles they are? Well, because we can then get the measure of angle two. Because it just so happens that corresponding angles are congruent to each other. And you can kind of see that. I mean, they're like the exact same type of angle. So if the measure of angle one, which we were already given the directions, is 110 degrees, then the measure of angle two is also 110 degrees. All right, what about angles two and three? They are a pair of what? Well, it just so happens that angles two and three are opposite angles formed by two intersecting lines down here. What do we call angles that are opposite angles of each other? We call them vertical angles. By the way, vertical angles are congruent. Keep that in mind. Now, what about problem number four? Angles one and three. They are a pair of something angles. Well, angle one was this guy way up here. Angle three, ooh, they're both outside of the parallel lines, meaning like above and below and their opposite corners on the outside of the parallel lines. That has a name, alternate exterior angles. And again, why do we care? Alternate exterior angles are congruent. Vertical angles are also congruent. So we already knew angle one was 110 degrees. We already knew angle two was 110 degrees. Well, angle three is congruent to angle two because of vertical angles. Angle three is congruent to angle one because of vertical angles. So angle three is also 110 degrees. All right, next, problem number six. Angles two and four are a pair of what kind of angles? All right, angle two is here. Angle four is this guy here. They together form a straight angle. What do we know about straight angles? Well, we know the two angles that together form a straight angle are called a pair of, boom, supplementary angles. And angles three and four are also a pair of supplementary angles. Check it out. Three and four together form a straight angle, except it's diagonal this way. But it doesn't matter. If two angles are side by side and together form a straight angle, they are a pair of supplementary angles. And now that we know that we have some supplementary angles here, we can find the measure of angle four. Now, here's a hint. It doesn't even look like that it's the same measure as angles one, two, and three. In fact, it's kind of obvious when I made it blue instead of red. But even if I didn't do that color system, 
Since angles three and four, or two and four, together form a straight angle, we know their measures add to equal 180 degrees. So we can take 180, subtract away the measure of angle three, or angle two, depending which way you're looking at this, of 110 degrees, subtract that away from 180, and that will leave us with the measure of angle four. 180 minus 110 is 70 degrees, so there's your measure for angle four. All right, middle section of the second page. Given Q is parallel to W, and you can see that here, here's Q, here's W, they're definitely parallel, uh, or they definitely look parallel. K is the transversal, it's definitely the line that intersects. Now this time, it's kind of a different way of looking at parallel lines. We've seen a lot of drawings where the parallel lines are almost horizontal. Here they're closer to being vertical and the transversal is horizontal. So a little bit different. What are they giving us also in the directions? They're telling us the measure of angle two is 74 degrees. So I even made a bold face print for you here. This time angle two is the one that they're giving you the measure of. Knowing the measure of angle two, we can actually get the measure of all these other angles. Now, I recommend going in the order that I have the problems in, but you could actually go out of order if you wanted to on some of these. So hit pause in the video. I want you to go ahead and use everything you've learned about vertical angles and uh, supplementary angles and uh, what else, corresponding angles, maybe even alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles. Use what you've learned about those things to find the measure of angle four, angle five, angle seven, angle one, and angle eight. Hit pause, do these problems now, then hit play when you're ready to see how you did. All right, did you already do these on your own? If you're sitting there and you're like, no, well then hit pause. You gotta try some math on your own to get better at it, to learn the material. All right, here we go. Problem number one, how do I get the measure of angle four? Well, remember, I already know the measure of angle two is 74 degrees. Where's angle four? Oh, do you see what I see? Angle two and angle four are in matching positions. They're both like in this top right-hand corner, but angle four is in the top right-hand corner for the right side of the picture. Angle two is in the top right-hand corner for this left side of the picture. Bottom line, their corresponding angles, which means they have the same measure. So therefore the measure of angle four is also 74 degrees, just like angle two was. What about angle five? Where is angle five? All right, it is going this way. Oh, do you see what I see now that I've drawn this? Angles two and four, opposite angles of each other. That's what we call vertical angles, which means angle five is also 74 degrees. Now that's not the only way you could have figured it out. Angles four and five are congruent because they're a pair of alternate exterior angles. So often there's more than one way of figuring out an answer. Most kids probably thought of vertical angles, but I wonder if a few kids thought of alternate exterior angles to prove that angle five is 74 degrees. All right, what about angle seven? It's also 74 degrees, how do I know? Many different ways. I could have said angle four and seven are a pair of of vertical angles. I could have said angle two and seven are a pair of alternate interior angles. Or maybe I noticed that angles five and seven are in matching positions and therefore they are a pair of corresponding angles. So many different ways of figuring this out. 74 degrees for the measure of angle seven. What about angle one? All right, angle one was like this. It just so happens that angle one and angle five are a pair of supplementary angles. Or maybe you noticed, since we already had the measure of angle two at the very beginning, that angle one and angle two are a pair of supplementary angles because together they form a straight angle. So what do we do with supplementary angles? We can take 180 minus the measure of the angle that we already knew, 74 degrees. And that will give us the measure of angle one. So what is that? 106 degrees. And then finally, angle eight. Well, angle eight is also gonna be 106 degrees and I'll prove it to you. Angle eight is a, let me get rid of all these red angles so it's a little bit less cluttered here. Angle eight and angle one are a pair of alternate exterior angles. 
I've actually had some kids who will find the measure of angle eight first and then get the measure of angle one. So that's why I said earlier, you can kind of go out of order if you wanted to. Um, but there you go. I know some of you are noticing that when there's two parallel lines with one transversal, then there's going to be one type of acute angles and one type of obtuse angles. But that's not always going to work if there's more than one transversal. But I will admit, if there's only one transversal, one line that intersects the parallel lines, then yes, there's only two possible answers, one of which will be acute, the other of which will be obtuse. That is true. But you get a problem like this at the bottom, and yo, we got two different transversals. Now, check it out. We have two parallel lines, C and D, and the directions even verify that these are parallel. But then we got P as a transversal and line Q as a transversal. What else are we being told? We're told that the measure of angle one is 37 degrees. All right, with all that in mind, oh, by the way, another hint, also notice this guy here. With all that in mind, let's have you go ahead and try numbers one through seven in the bottom section of the second page on your own. So hit pause in the video now. I definitely want you to do as much of this as you can on your own. It's all based on stuff you've already learned. Hit pause in the video, try these problems on your own, then hit play when you're ready, when you're ready to see how you did. All right, did you already do numbers one through seven? If you didn't, you gotta try them on your own. Hit pause, try them on your own. All right, I'm assuming you already did them. Here we go. The measure of angle four is what? Okay. Little right angles trick here. If this guy is 90 degrees, then this guy is 90 degrees. And this guy is 90 degrees. And this guy is 90 degrees. And because of corresponding angles, if this angle is 90 degrees, top left-hand corner, then angle four is also 90 degrees. It's a right angle. All right, next problem. Angle one and angle two are a pair of what kind of angles? Okay, angle one, check it out. It is like this. Angle two, I don't have any evidence that angle two is gonna be the same measure as angle one. But remember the right angle tricks I've taught you before? If this guy here, angle four, is a right angle, and it's along a straight line, then this is also a right angle where angles one and angle two happen to meet. So angles one and two together form a right angle. What do we call a pair of angles that make a right angle? We call them a pair of complementary angles. All right, next problem. Well, then what about the measure of angle two? Remember, I know the measure of angle one is 37 degrees. I now know that angle one and two together form 90 degrees, so I could therefore take the 90 degrees, subtract angle one's measure, which is 37 degrees, and that will give me the measure of angle two, which is, boom, 53 degrees. All right, what about angles one and three? Angle one. Angle three. All right, you're probably noticing, okay, they're congruent. But what type of angles are they? They're actually in matching positions. Angle one's kind of in like this left corner. Well, angle three is in that same type of corner, but on this little side of the picture or way over here. Angles in matching positions are called corresponding angles. Now, that might have been a little tricky to see. It's a lot easier to find corresponding angles when there's only one transversal. Here we have two angle or lines P and Q, but they are, angles one and three are corresponding angles. And now that you know they're corresponding angles, well, then we can easily get the measure of angle three. It is going to be congruent to angle one, 37 degrees. Next up, angles two and five. All right, let me go ahead and move away angles one and three. Let's focus on two and five. Here's two. Angle five just so happens to be an opposite angle from angle two. 
two angles that are formed by two intersecting lines. Now, this is a little tricky. You're like, what do you mean two intersecting lines? This line here and this line here together form the opposite angles of two and five. So what do we call a pair of opposite angles formed by two intersecting lines? We call them a pair of vertical angles. Why do we care? Well, we already knew the measure of angle two. We already knew it was 53 degrees. Vertical angles are congruent. So if angle two is 53 degrees, then angle five also has a measure of 53 degrees. All right, if you're like Mr. Undercoffer, that was a little trickier than the top section and the middle section. Okay, I agree. It was. Don't lose sleep if you got some of those wrong. But I bet some of the things we did here could show up again, spoiler alert, on the third page. And it just so happens I'm going to do a separate video for the third page. So thanks for watching this second video. We'll see you next time.